All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at variables and data types. Now, variables are going to play such a significant role in all of your programming experiences from this point forward. Basically, all they are are memory locations that are set up to hold a specific type of data. Now, why would you want to store data? Well, think about it. Just in our common day life, every day, we have to remember things, and we remember things for specific reasons, so that later we can recall that information for doing something with it. Well, it's no different when we go in here and we start developing our own applications, because as we start working inside the, let's say, the guts of the application, we need to occasionally store information, add information to that, retrieve the information for doing something. And we do this all through variables. So all it is is a simple memory location that has been designated to hold a specific type of data. And this takes us into data types. Now, there are all sorts of different types that we can establish inside of C or C++. Now, in this lesson here, we're only going to focus on three of those, because when we start working with some of the other ones, there's some interesting things that we're going to have to start talking talking about. Uh, well, in this case, though, we'll just start out simple. We're going to talk about the int, the float, and the double. So with that being said, let me go ahead and turn it on over to Joel. All right. Um, the first question that you probably would have is, how am I going to go about creating these variables? Yeah, how do you declare a variable? Right. So let's go into here, and all you need to do is say the um, first specify the data type, and in this case it will be int, which is an integer. In other words, anything that is a whole number, like 2, 3, 4, 5, Whatever, okay. negative, negative 10, but not actual decimal values like 36.26, yeah. something like that. So what we can do is now, after we have the data type, we can give it a name, some friendly name. Say okay. um, temp int, so a temporary okay. integer. So that's just our name. But that name could be just about anything. It could have been buzz. It could have been buzz. It could have been anything. Although there are a few rules that you may need to remember, like you cannot start it with a number. You can't put spaces in the middle of it. Right. Okay. Certain rules that need Com to be remembered. Yeah, kind of common sense type things. Right. And with that, all you need to do is end in any semicolon, as pretty much any line. Okay. So now we actually have our, our variable, our integer variable, declared. Okay. But as of yet, there's nothing really in temp integer. Well, there is something, but we don't know what it is. Exactly. At this point, just by declaring it with the line that you used there, all that's happened is Windows has simply said, here is, or your operating system, right. here is some memory that will is the size required to hold the particular data type, in this case an integer. And here's that location, and now you can get to that location quickly by using the friendly name temp int. Right. But whatever was in there, whatever data was there, is still there, just some random numbers. Exactly. So we could go in here and just type out the name, so temp int, and we can use the assignment operator, equals, and say it equals, say, 45. Which is going to take the number 45 and put it into that memory location. Exactly. Now, this is very important. This is called initialization. Without doing initialization, if you forget that you haven't actually put something in there and later on turn around and use temp int, you could get yourself in a lot of trouble because right. it may be containing some type of really crazy data That's right. that you may not want to be using. Exactly. So we may want to just go ahead and actually right here we can go ahead and delete this out Okay. and go ahead and type in temp int equals and then end that quotation and do another output, and let's call this temp int. So we're going to output to our output stream temp int. Right. Now, don't let this confuse you that over here you see we've got these quotes as I rip the mouse away from poor Joel. Basically, what's inside these quotes right here is just treated like a string, you know? It's anything right. that you want to put in there. I could have said, hello, how's it going? Hello world equals, it doesn't matter. This right here is just going to be output straight to the screen, period. Now over here, you'll notice there are no quotes around this guy. And what's going to happen here is, well, without no quotes around it, we're going to be referring to the data that's being stored inside of temp int, which exactly. in this case happens to be 45. Right. This may even make it a little bit more clear if we go in here and say, my variable temp int equals. Excellent. So with that, we also have an end line. And let's go ahead and see how this looks. So let's go ahead and press Control F5. Do you want to build? Yes, I want to build. And it builds and links, and you'll see that it says, let's move this down, my variable temp int equals 45. Hey, I say it works. Yes, it is. Now, yes, it is? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a couple of other variable types to talk about, but before we get into those, because those are going to be really 
brief discussions. Let's take a look at something that I find to be very valuable when working in C++, and that is the ability to kind of debug your code. Now, I know we've got later on a full lesson on debugging, right. but right now, the reason I want to show a little bit of debugging stuff is because we have the ability to actually see what memory location this information is being stored in and what information is in that memory location right. at any given time. So, yeah, why don't we do that? We can press in a key. And down here we have, on line 9, we have our initialization. Let's press F9. Basically, we're setting a breakpoint here, so we stop at this point when we get into our debugger. But we'll talk about that more in the debugging, debugging lesson. lesson. And let's go up into debug. And all we need to do is press F5 or start. And now we're dropped into, basically, we can go one line at a time through our code. Right. And you'll see that we're on this line, temp n equals 45. And down here in our autos window here, basically, it's showing all the variables that basically Visual Studio is saying is relevant to us. So we have our temp int variable here, and you'll notice if over here in the value, our value is some negative weird number. Yeah. We don't really know what it is. Definitely not 45. Definitely not 45. So that's why we need to always initialize our variables. Otherwise, we don't know what's in it. That's because at this point, in case you're wondering, the breakpoint means we stopped at that line. We have yet to execute that line. Right. So if we press F10, now we've executed that line, moved to the next. You can see with the yellow, actually, you can see with the yellow arrow on the side which line's about to be executed. Right. So now that we've executed the one, take a look at what happened to our value. Right down here, our value is now 45. Excellent. And if you look up here, we have this memory one section. Right now I have it automatically come up, but if we exit this out, let's just exit it out, and you'll notice if we come up to here with our our section here, our menu, we can come down to memory and we can choose to add a memory window. So if we press memory one, you'll notice now we have a memory window that's actually showing our memory, our computer's memory. So basically what Joel has just done is opened up somebody's brain and he's looking inside. Oh, yeah. You're looking at the actual data that exists at those memory locations in your RAM at this very moment. Actually, it's our RAM. But our RAM. <laughs> so if you look here, we so have... So be careful! <laughs> Don't go messing around with this without being careful. Yes. Um, notice we have the address here, and this is where, in our case, we want to look for the address of temp in. Now, all you need to do is put an ampersand and then type in the variable name. We'll be explaining this more in the pointer section, but right. all you need to do is that. And if we press enter, you'll notice we jump down, as we already were, in fact, to our memory address for our temporary integer. Right. And you'll notice we have a 2D000000. Yeah. Our integer is four bytes. And you'll mm -hmm. notice that's why each one of these is going to be one byte, each set of zeros. That's right. So this is a total of four bytes all the way to here. That's right. So this 2D is, in hex, 45. That's right. As a matter of fact, by holding your mouse over, look at a little pop-up right it there. It brings up a pop-up. Isn't that thing? sweet? And for those of you that are going, 2D is 45, what? Well, this is base 16. So right. D is, you know, you can. this is how you count. Right. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Right. Then as soon as we get to 16, 16 is 1, 0, because 16 is the second column over. Well, you've got 2D, so you've got two 16s. Right. Add those guys together. And that. You get 32. There you go. And then you add 13, and you get 45. 45. Hey. So if we change and, and this. And go ahead and show them about, or talk about the flipped memory representation right oh, there as right. well. Also, this is sort of a flipped memory representation, like you just said. <laughs> and <laughs> it is. Um, because if it was 2D000000, that if you looked at it and actually looked from left to right. Right. If this was, you were thinking this was the high, high value. High number. Yeah, you would be. That would be a crazy yeah, high huge number. Huge number. So, I mean. Don't think of it as zero zero zero, and then we put 2D. That would be an insanely high value in our case. Exactly, because that would be flipped. Right. So if we, we can go in here and actually change the specific values we have here, we can say 0F, which is... Da -da -da, 15. 15. And you'll this notice. is why we say be very careful. Notice how he's changing stuff. <laughs> You're in my memory changing <laughs> stuff, dude. Be careful. So now you'll notice that our temp in, our value, is actually 15. That's right. Which is very cool. Excellent. So if we go ahead and execute our output line here and press F10, and let's go down over to here to our actual console. 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 <laughs> I'll say it right one of these days. <laughs> you'll notice it says my variable temp int equals 15, Sweet. which is what we just changed it to. It is. So very cool. So now let's just go under debug here, and we'll stop debugging for now. And another thing that we may want to go ahead and show before we look at the other um, data types, is how we can go in here and in line directly change it do and a, initialize it. Do a declaration it. initialization right. all in one line. 
So, I mean, it is good practice to go ahead, before you even use this inside your function, to go ahead and set it to zero. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's just something you should be doing. And this does work. If we go ahead and press Control F5 and run it, you'll notice my variable tenpin equals zero. And having it set at zero, it's, it's much better because now we've, we're dealing with some predictable data as opposed to exactly. whatever just happens to be in there. So, with that set to zero, let's go ahead and show you some other data types. <gasps> More variables. Ooh. So, let's copy that line because I'm lazy. And we come over here and he, we can say... He really is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go in here and change this to say temp, oh, temp float. So float floats can actually hold, say, 16.6666, something okay. like that. All right. Or whatever. And Dealing with floating point numbers here? Yes, dealing with floating point numbers. Sweet. So we can say 32.46 whatever. And that will actually register and be stored. If we did the same value into here, it would actually truncate that and get rid of this whole beginning part. Right. Truncate from the decimal back. Right. From the decimal point, yeah. So if we go ahead and go down to my variable, let's actually copy this line. So we have another line to print off. And we can say temp float. And we can change this over to hmm, temp float. So now it's going to say my variable temp float equals whatever is inside of temp float. Right. So if we run this and link it up, you'll notice that we have exactly what we typed out, 32.6543. Of course, keep in mind that by using the float, we're now requiring just a little bit more memory. Exactly. So, I mean, if we can go into here and type in a few more, and we type this out, you'll notice that it truncates it down to 6544. Four. We have actually, how many is this? Six Seven. Four. Yeah. Um, but you notice we only have four here. The reason right. for this is not because of the float, but actually because of our output here, That's our right. output statement. Just keep that in mind. Um, though, the, though the float type does have a limitation. It does have a limitation. It's not out to infinity and it, beyond. And we can, to infinity, <laughs> we can actually show that here by using a double. Right. So let's go ahead and type in a double, and we can say temp double equals 32. And actually, let's copy this value just so you can see that they are indeed the same. And put that out. Actually, let's add a few more at the end here. So, something like that. Sounds good. And let's add this another line. Let's go into here. And let's say temp double and temp double. So, now if we execute this, you'll notice something interesting. Every single one of these, both of these, our float and our double, are both truncated. Again, ah, but see the beauty of, of the output. See the beauty of introducing the little bit of debugging stuff a yes, second ago? Yes, now it's going to come in handy. Now let's take a look at what those variables actually are if we were to stop and look into them. Right, so if we press F9 and stop, actually, you know what, let's stop at our, right, let's just, <laughs> excuse me, let's just stop right here. And let's press F5, and now we've started to debug. And you'll notice that we're at these lines, and if we go down here and look, our temp double equals... 32.65 whatever and if we go to locals I mean in this case autos it's not showing everything that we need that's because it's checking for variables closest in our range and you notice temp in is right next to us right on the line that we're executing and temp double is on the last line we're executing right. so things we're not really worried about float but we are so if we go to locals, this is going to show all the local variables that we have access to. And by, to. by mentioning local variables, that brings up a discussion of scope, which right. we'll talk about in just a minute. Exactly. So if you look down here to our temp int, we have a value of 32, as we specified in our integer. And temp double is this long number out here. But then our temp float only goes to here and then stops. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is our temp float cannot hold as much, doesn't have as much accuracy as our double does. Exactly. But it's not as large of a place in memory for holding exactly. data. Exactly. So it's it's kind of a balance. You want to decide, do I want accuracy or do I want to save memory? Right. So it's kind of keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and stop this. Of course, right now that's not something you'll really need to keep in mind as you're just starting to experiment and learn how to right. make very basic programs with C++. But later on when we start getting into some of the more advanced stuff, memory control is going to become very, very, very important. important. So let's get rid of that um, breakpoint by pressing F9. And now let's kind of introduce a little bit of local and global access. In other basically. words, let's talk about scope. Scope, exactly. Yes. So if we go outside of our main function, let me just quickly create a variable. So okay. outside of our functions entirely, we can say, let's create a integer, and we'll call it my var. Okay? That and sounds we'll good. initialize it to something like 234. That sounds excellent. And if you look... It's, this is kind of interesting. This variable here can be accessed. My var can be accessed within any functions whatsoever. However, these func these variables here that we've declared inside of the main function can only be 
used inside, inside of the main function. Inside this function. So to kind of demonstrate this a little better, why don't we go ahead and create another function, a okay. test function. Okay. But don't worry about this too much. We'll be discussing this in the functions lesson. So let's go ahead and type uh, void, and we'll say test func, and we'll end that parentheses. Funk, so funk, 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 funk. Yeah. <laughs> and if we try to access, let's, let's first do this. C out, and we can say my bear. And, and uh, actually, just to make this a little bit clear, we can say my fair equals, and then like that. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And we can go down to here and say call that function. So that's test func. And you'll which, which, real quickly, well, all this is going to do is, of course, when the application starts and we start coming through here linearly, execute, 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 execute. And once we get down here, all this is going to do is it's going to temporarily jump away from this function right here, and it's going to come up here to the test func function, and it's just going to run whatever is in it, and then when it's done with this, it returns. it returns back to right here and continues, which since there's nothing else, that's the end of our application anyways. Right. So what we're going to happen here is we're going to pump out three lines, and then it's going to go into here and pump out this last line that says my pair. Okay. So let's go ahead and control F5 and execute this, and you'll notice that we do get exactly that. We get my variable, temp 10, 32, 32, this is all good, and my vari does it does see that variable very well. I mean, Absolutely. it can see 234. And it printed out. And it printed out. No so problems. it's all good. However, if, if we were to do something cool, like, well, how about this? Copy one of those let's lines. Let's copy him. Yeah. And put them up here. Yeah. And, oh, we got temp double here. So it's looking for a temp double inside our test function. I would say our compiler is good enough that it's going to recognize that temp double is not a global variable that was defined outside of the function. And it's probably not going to like what you're trying to do. No. So if we press, um, let's go into our build, and let's say Control F7 or Compile, and if you look, ooh, it doesn't we get like errors. you. It doesn't like you. No, it doesn't like, like you at all. So if we go here and double click on our error, you'll notice it brings us to the line that's causing the problem, and you'll see it says, "Wait, undeclared identifier. Our temp double that's right. is out of scope. It hasn't been declared. Right. It hasn't as far been declared. as this concern is concerned, it does not exist here. Period. It's not that it's out of scope. It's just not here. Right. Because it's a different variable down there in the other one. Exactly. So what we could go ahead and do, I mean, if we really, really want to temp double, we could go ahead and take our double declaration here, put it over here. And now this is in the global section, declared outside of any functions, so it it's basically has global priority. So every function can see it. Right. So if we press Control F7 again, no problems. You got and it. And if we press Control F5 and link it and run it, you'll notice that it recognizes it just fine. Now, do let me go ahead and say this, since these videos are going hand in hand with the online course at 3D Buzz. We don't really like global variables that much, do we there, no, Joe? No, we don't. No, you should handle your data appropriately. Right. Sending copies of your data so that it can be worked on, et cetera, and then returned back properly. And we will be covering all of that stuff later on as we progress further and further into working with variables, pointers, et cetera. Right. But going in there, because a, a beginner could simply say, well, man, I'm just going to make all of my variables global. Not a good idea. Not a good idea at all, because you could end up accidentally writing some sort of data to a variable that you didn't intend to write in one right. of your function calls that could end up messing up other functions, which in the end is going to give you a bad output for your program. Right. But global variables do have their place. They do. They but have they for constants, et cetera. I mean, there are uses right. for it. It's just don't go in there and try to make every single thing a global variable. Exactly. If there is a way to make it a localized variable and be smart about it, do that. Right. Okay. So... With that, I think that pretty much wraps up what I really wanted to cover. Okay, so that talks about integer. Well, first of all, what a variable type is being a simple, kind of like a container, a location in memory that's going to store information. We took a look at how we can declare them, which was just a matter of starting the variable declaration off with the word int, float, or double. Again, we'll be getting into other variable types as we progress through the lessons. There are several others that we'll be dealing with. Then we showed how to give it a friendly name because memorizing a memory address would just be a pain. And then how to go ahead and initialize it by putting data into that memory address. Then we showed you a little bit about uh, some debugging and how we could go in there and take a look at what information was being stored in variables and um, how we could actually go into the memory ourselves and change the number, which is definitely cool. And please be careful when playing with that. It's like playing with fire. And then we talked a little bit about scope, local versus global things that are declared inside the function being local, not seen outside in other functions if they were not declared over here. And if it is declared over here, it's a separate variable altogether. just happen to have the same name. And then by setting it outside of our functions, making it global so that it is seen by all of the functions. And with that, that's just going to wrap up this quick introduction to variables and scope and data types. So thanks a lot. <laughs>